Hello and welcome back to Morsels and Motors. Uh, today you join me again with the uh, Astra. I've had the Astra now for, I don't know, about four or five days and um, I've driven it a little bit and there are definitely a few little niggles on it that I really want to try and sort out. So I thought, why not bring you along for the little ride? The first little niggle, which I've actually dealt with on off camera, is the front bumper was wonky, uh, as was the front number plate. So I have straightened those up so it's now looking a lot better. The front and rear number plates have got this Western Motorworks written on it. Now I have done a little bit of research and uh, that those must be its original dealer plates because that was a Vauxhall dealer in Chislehurst in South East London and that is where GW comes from. So they must be its original plates so that's really exciting. It's actually still a Vauxhall dealer, so uh, I might actually go and visit it one day and park the car outside it. Uh, another job I've done is, um, I know I say job a lot, sorry about that, is uh, replace the bulb in the number plate light. Okay, so niggles. But the main problem, and what I'm going to try and tackle in this video at, at least, is the gear change. Now, third and fourth are always absolutely fine. First, so but when you slow down to second and first, um, it's really, really hard to get it into gear. Now, it doesn't crunch at all. It's just there's like a resistance of some kind. So I think it might just be the, the selector mechanism itself um, that is uh, somehow dodgy. I don't know if it'll replicate it when I'm stationary. So see, when I'm stationary there, it's lovely and goes into all the gears fine. That second, so it's going to be third, fourth, first. It's all fine there, but when I'm on the move and I'm like travelling in third and let's say I'm coming to some traffic lights and I want to there put it in first, oh, there's just some stiffness and resistance and it won't go in until you've got to really force it in and it feels wrong to force it in. So I think it might just need a bit of greasing. Let's just start with that as a hope. Okay, let's get some grease into that joint first. I don't think this car has been driven very much at all in the last several years. So I'm sort of hoping that these sorts of issues are all just kind of things having dried out a bit through lack of use rather than it being anything more serious. Come on. Okay. The bulldog sprayed up that. Let's go and give it a few gear changes inside the car and see if that kind of spreads the grease around. Okay, let's take it down the lane and just see if that's done anything at all to the gear change. I'm guessing probably not, to be honest. Well, no success so far. I think I might have to give up on that task briefly and wait till the Haynes manual arrives and see what it says about the gear oil and what that little bung on the top of the, the selector is. Maybe I need to get it on ramps and get the gear selector and from underneath and see if that can be greased up. Maybe it needs a bit of a, maybe it needs a bit of greasing. Oh, I could have a look from inside the car. Hmm, hold on to that thought. Okay, let's see if I can get out anything from under here. Okay, I can actually see the ball there for the ball joint for the selector. Uh, and it does look very kind of dry. So maybe that just needs a bit of greasing up. Maybe that's the culprit after all. So let me see if I can get some grease on that. Okay, I have given it a good clean and so now I just put a bit of grease in there. So I've been playing with the gears, so in first and second, and it is a little bit stiff. Now you can see that that bit of the selector, which is the reverse mechanism, because you lift it up to go into reverse like that, um, that is rubbing up against this kind of guide as you go into first and second. So I'm going to give that a bit, a bit of a greasing as well because it feels really, really 
stiff against that. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's made any difference, to be honest. Okay, I have taken the car for a drive and it's no better, frankly, really. I think what I've probably figured out is that there's definitely some play in there, so in the box or in the selector mechanism. So I think I need to go from underneath and see where the bottom of this um, gear selector joins up with the lever or the rod that goes to the gearbox and see if there's some play in there that I can tighten up somehow. But that's one for another day because I need to tidy up for today. One failure job. I don't like failing. Okay, next little task I want to do is I just want to check the tyre pressures because it's kind of a little bit jittery this car and also the steering is overly light I would say. So I wonder whether the tyres are a bit overinflated. Whipped out the um, owner's manual and it says that the tyre pressures should be 25 front and 25 rear for uh, up to three occupant, occupants and that's probably sufficient. Um, it doesn't say that it's the saloon and E because this actually this predates the uh, this is June 1980 it predates the um, introduction of the saloon model but I would imagine it's exactly the same and they, they are 15513 tires let's see what they are although I don't approve of that 12 volt socket setup at the moment uh, it's quite useful to have one uh, right Screw this in, so let's change the, um, this is my tyre thingy, oh uh, yeah, no, PSI is what we want, so let's screw this in, and see what it registers as, oh, 39 and a half, okay, yeah, I'm there for 40, right, yes, that might be why it is very, very jittery. Let's just go here, and I think we just let some air out, slowly. Hopefully it'll come a bit quicker than that. And it's coming down, 39. Who on earth pumped these tyres up to 40 PSI? Okay, well, it's going to take me a little while to do this. Join you in a minute. Well, it's taking a while, but we're now finally down to 26 and a half on this one. So just gonna be a couple more seconds for it to get down to 25. In fact, I think I'll leave it at 25.5. I'll call that a day. One down, three to go. Just uh, whilst I'm doing this front one, I'm actually gonna take off these aftermarket um, mud flaps. They just don't suit the car. Um, they kind of flare out far too much, so I'm going to take them off. I've greased up the um, bolts, so I'll start unscrewing them in a second. Alright, this one is now 25 and a half, so we'll, again, call that a day. Give it an extra half a PSI, just for fun. Okay, let's see if these, uh, see if these come off. Oh, they turn. That one turns, anyway. these work but oh, well that's it done off I've taken the mud flaps off so this is the view of the car without the mud flaps I think it looks a lot better they really kind of flared out far too much okay I have lowered the tire pressures on all four tires let's just see how heavy the steering is now in comparison to before slightly scared it's very light oh yeah okay it's still reasonably light but that's got a bit more feel to it you can still do dry steering but literally you could dry steer with like one finger before which is why I kind of suspected that there might be an issue with the tire pressures you join me a few days later and uh, weather's looking pretty decent so I think I can get on with a few more tasks on the Astra it has been raining and some water is kind of collecting up in this scuttle um, and because it's a little bit rusty it needs to be protected. I'm not actually going to do that today um, 
but what I am going to do is check whether the drains are working properly. Um, so it's supposed to drain out through this little tube here, any water that goes into the scuttle. And I think there's quite a lot of detritus happening under there. So what have we got? Ooh, big gold, yeah. Ugh. Okay, yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff inside that. Uh, what I probably need to do is get a uh, hose pipe or something and sort of jet it out. I might do that. Right, I have cleared up the pipe. So if I pour a bit of water into the scuttle there, there you go, it freely flows. So that's great. Looking in the other areas of the scuttle, um, this kind of corner over here on the passenger side is kind of full of a bit of leaves and stuff. So that needs a bit of a clean out. However, I won't pick it up on camera for some reason, but there is a bit of a hole in the back of that, which I don't think is supposed to be there. Looking from inside the car, you can just about see some daylight with a couple of holes there, which explains why I have a wet carpet overnight after it's been raining. So I think I'd better fill that with probably just a bit of fiberglass just to uh, stop the rain from getting in. Next task is I'm going to see if I can tidy up this uh, 12 volt socket arrangement. So I think the first thing I need to do is turn off, I'll take off the battery. Okay, the um, red wire kind of goes up there just directly to the fuse box. Fuse box is just here. Okay, I have unscrewed this, so I should be able to just, yeah, just slide the uh, red wire out without having to move this trim so I can screw it back on again without having to have dislodged it. I think I can disconnect this um, fuse box from the dash so I can get better access to it. There we go. Push that down and see what we're dealing with. So, uh, there's just a black and a red wire going into this big red sheath. So I, don't know, I, need to, I just want to shorten it. Right, that is now much tidier. It is now just dangling up there, cable tied nicely, um, so that if I do want to plug in a phone or something like that, I can do, but it's not obvious that it is there. So that is a great result. Next task on the Astra takes me to inside the driver's bit of the cabin and to the clip for the driver's sun visor, which has snapped off. I have sourced a new one. So the way it works is there's a plunger pin inside uh, that kind of pushes in uh, to keep it in place, keep it solid. Which means I need to work out how to get that pin out of this one that's in the roof, which is not going to be particularly fun. My current plan is to get a screw, see if I can drive it into the pin and then pull it out. That's the theory anyway. Let's see how I go. Okay, I've driven the screw in, but I'm not sure that's going to work. I'll get some pliers and see if I can lever it out, but perhaps that's not going to work. Mole grips. I feel this is just going to smack me in the face. Oh, okay. That worked. Well, the whole... So the pin didn't come out, but the whole thing did. So that's good. Just double checking. Yep, they are exactly the same. So let's put the new one on. All right, that's in. And now I just need to push the pin in. Oh God, which is easier said than done. Oh, that's quite tough. I might need to get, uh, I need something mechanical to uh, help push that in. Hooray, it's in. Goody good. And hopefully, hopefully the uh, sun visor clips on. Yes, it does. Good. Well, that's one more completed repair. Yay. Final little uh, task I want to do on the Astro in this video is to grease up the driver's window mechanism because 
it's really stiff. It feels really horrible. So, um, yeah, so I just need to take the door card off and see if I can get inside and grease it up. To remove the door card, I need to, there's a little clip there that I've got to pull out, apparently. That needs to be removed carefully, and there's some screws in this, and then it should just pop out the sides. So let's see if I can do that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. One clip. I think this is just an edge around this kind of rougher material inside. So I think I just need to pull it out at the top or bottom and then it'll prise off. I really don't want to break this. So you can see it's got little grips that just grip inside. So that's off. The final bit off then is the handle itself. Okay, one handle. Right, now it's just a case of pulling off the poppers and hopefully not breaking any of them as well. That was an ordeal. Most door cards I've taken off would be way easier than that. I suppose I could say that means it's good quality or hasn't been off in a long time. I don't think this has been off before. I really don't, which is incredible considering this car is 42 years old, 41 years old. Okay, so here is the mechanism. Let me just reattach the handle and then see where it runs. Okay, so there's some grease there, but it looks very dry. So if I replace this grease here, and on the cog there, and then we'll see what it's like in a few moments. Okay, I have greased all the mechanism and all the sliders, and it's way, way better. So let's have a little look. Oh, so smooth. So good. Amazing. Right, let's get this door card back on, and then I'm done. There we go, one completed door card. And I've even lined up the window winder with that line in the uh, vinyl, which is how it is in the brochure. So happy days. And that's it for this video. Uh, that's all the tinkering I wanted to do this time uh, on the Astra. I think that the Astra will actually now be going to a garage uh, for the winter um, because it is getting a bit cold and there'll be salt on the roads and I won't want to use it. So um, this might be the last Astra video for a little while. But in the new year, we'll get it out and do obviously a few more tasks on it. I want to sort out the gear change. I want to sort out uh, some of the rust uh, and really enjoy it. So um, there we go. Hope you like this little video, bit of Astra tinkering. Uh, I will see you again soon in another video. Bye.